Hey, it's Wes with BarronGreenTeam.com and BarronHeating.com and the Baron Heating. I am just coming at you with a Daikin 4MXS with a forehead install. This was fantastic. I mean, what a great story. Um, everything about this install went awesome. Everything about the before and after part of it is fantastic. This really, this job is really why we do uh, ductless and why we do what we do and, and everything. So to take you through it, um, here's a picture of the outdoor unit. Uh, this is a little speedy channel. You'll see that we have a unit upstairs that is uh, running right now. Uh, we're doing it in cooling just to cool the room down. But um, that runs up to a bedroom upstairs. The rest of them are on the main floor. This family uh, had just moved into this house and they had an electric furnace with like the crappiest ductwork you'd ever seen, the worst return air uh, you'd ever seen. There's the one that goes up to the main living area. Um, and I'll give you an idea of noise here. And so what happened with them is that they got their first power bill and it was like, I'm not kidding you, like $600 for a month. So this unit's on. Right now it's in low ambient cooling, so it's not, you know, gonna be at its max volume, but this is kind of a medium cooling volume. You'll notice that it's literally not making any noise, so, but it is on. I don't know if you can see the fan moving there, so. But these guys got their bills, it was like five, six hundred dollars. They literally, she cried when she opened it. I mean, like, they could afford the house, but this was just another thing. Happened to be that we were acquaintances, um, and I came out and looked at everything, and uh, we found out that now that unit goes to the master. So we're coming in through the crawl space and we're coming up and to the master you'll see that uh, when we go inside. We didn't do anything in the basement because it just didn't need anything really. It's got its own little heater um, but we'll see that on the inside. So anyways we went through everything and they were always cold. So the problem is with, with uh, these stories is that people are getting $500, $600 bills and they're cold. They're keeping their house at 60, you guys. 60 degrees, and they've got $500 bills. So what's happening is all their heat from their crappy electric furnace was leaking out into the crawl space. The laws of physics require that every part that you put into the crawl space comes back into the house. So now you have super you know, chill air coming back into the home that you then have to reheat with your horrible furnace and ductwork, and it just, the cycle just never ended. So let me take you inside and show you what we did, because, you know, there's a lot of split-level houses out there in weird homes, so. Let me take you through what happened here. So when you come in, you know, we're looking at, this area was was always super cold. And so we're coming in and we're looking at, you know, this main living area here. And you've got, we had a little fireplace down here that was using to supplement. But as you notice, this is just design elements, right? So when we come in, we got this big space and you're going, where is the... Where is it? I don't even know where it is. It's not on any of these walls. Well, what we were able to do by coming up that wall on the outside, like you saw, feel free to rewind, is we put it right up here. So this is taking care of this space really, really well. The idea, again, is that we don't want to go too much far over nine feet at the bottom. So you notice my hand is eight feet. That gives us so that the air coming out of it's not too cold when it hits you, because sometimes we're not at maximum output. And then we're de-stratifying since the return air is at the top, we're taking everything from this vault and loft space, right? And we're taking it and we're bringing it down. And then we're going, oh, sorry to make you dizzy there. And then going back up. And so that works really well. So that is operating fantastically. That's an 18,000 BTU. And then coming in here, we have a 12. And that is able to see, so when we talk about a two for one on head placement, we're looking at, okay, can we put it in a place, and I'll show you this upstairs, where we're not only gonna affect the space here, but we're gonna be able to push out into the foyer area and uh, not only affect the kitchen, but also, hey buddy, but also affect um, everything else beyond that. Now, when we were in the pantry, we came, were able to come up behind the crawl space was here, we were able to come up behind with a speedy channel and get our head uh, right on the other side of the wall, right through the wall. So super clean, uh, real exciting. So again, I'm looking at this kitchen space with that one. So then the other area was the master bedroom. This house is a little tricky because it's got multiple levels. 
but we had the, maybe I was, it's probably still in here. Let's see, was it in here? I swear it's in here. I'll show you guys this ancient one. So there, there was the old green beast, ancient furnace. And I mean, the return air on it alone was coming through some godforsaken space that was just crazy. And there was just no way to, to bring it back to life or to even make sense of it. So we abandoned it. Um, but so remember we had the channel came through the deck and then comes up the outside and then we're able to get, so again, like from a design standpoint, we're able to look at this room. Nobody wants to see the heads, right? So that's something to think about. And you come into the room and it's like, it doesn't exist. Who's going to come into your room and go, oh, there it is, you know? So we have the unit on the wall behind. And so we're able to project the cooling and heat out. There is a little bit of a noise element when the head is right behind you like that. But this location was really good. And then we're able to push the air out over top of them. That they can have, if it's cooling, it come right down on them if they want. So that worked out really good. And that one actually, okay, so this one's on low. This is like a low speed fan right now. So let's give you a, give you that right there. Okay. Hey bud. Oh, jeez. Awesome. Okay, so let's head upstairs to this room. So this was the one room upstairs. Remember we had the loft area, but that's going to be kind of taken care of by that space. And we're back in here with, uh, we have this one on powerful mode still. Okay, so this is the highest, uh, a small head. So that's going to be seven, six, nine, twelve is going to output as far as fan and noise. Okay. So be quiet here so you can listen. Now this head could be used for heating. It won't need to be. There's so much heat rising. You know, when you look at this house and you have this space and remember that we had that 12 coming up under here and that's the heat's going to rise. You have anything coming out of there. You have the loft space. So this room's never going to need heat, but we did put it up here because of cooling. In fact, like it's warm up here right now. We could, we put the cooling on. So I was just showing the customer how to run cooling, um, in the winter in case she gets too hot up here with all the heat on because it's very sensitive to to heat so we shut all the other zones off and are just running uh cooling but but yeah that's the noise that you're going to hear on uh, turbo mode from a small unit now we place this one to blow this is usually a faux pas but this is a serious cooling situation so we have this one able to blow right on the occupant of this bed and that was on purpose but it was also a two for one so when we look at where this is, we know that the upstairs is gonna be hot and we don't have a lot up there. So we're looking at lining up with the doorway, pushing some cooling out of this room because this head is, no matter what we do, is, is too big for a small bedroom. So we wanna be able to push that out uh, when it's necessary. So yeah, so anyways, so that's this place. If you have any questions, uh, sometimes I can get to them. I'm not always great at it, but um, if you have any questions, let me know. And then, um, you know, Daikin's a great brand. Check out the Daikin Life if you haven't looked at that. That's the new VRV hybrid system. But, uh, but there you go. Thanks for watching.